that's me, Julia Picard, your tour guide for the day. <laughs> Not really, but hey, it's an adventure and I'd love to bring you along with me. So let's see what happens. So before I start getting into the details of this trip, I just want to point out how important this trip was for me and my family. It's been my dad's lifelong dream to go to Tanzania on a safari and he genuinely never thought that that would have been possible. So I'm just feeling super grateful and blessed that this trip even happened and that we were all together as a family, though some important family members are missing and we miss them dearly. But it was such a beautiful trip and I couldn't have been any happier which is why I also want to share this footage with you guys because I know it is crazy to be able to go on these types of trips so I just love if you guys experience it with me as well and I'll try to give you guys all the details so it's as if you're flying with me and going through the safari and I do have a slight fear of flying but I will say flying on a bush plane is pretty easy going there was no turbulence and it was dry season so I didn't really worry too much Once we arrive, we're greeted by the most lovely tour guide ever. He's actually our game driver, and he's the one that's going to be talking to us all about the different animals that we see along the way. And we're greeted by him, and he provides us with coffee and tea and fresh cookies, and we're all just, like, amazed. We just can't believe that it's just such a great start to the trip. I mean, I know my parents are coffee addicts, and I love tea, so it really worked out for the best for everyone. So as soon as we were done, we immediately started for our very first game drive and that was to Lake Minera National Park and that's a rainforest which is so cool. We absolutely love that we immediately got right into the safari. That's so cool, right? Yeah. And there it's so beautiful because it's such different types of terrain and shrubbery than at the other two parks that we visited during this trip. So if you want to see the Serengeti, definitely hit subscribe because that will be in a separate video for part two where I also go over the safari packing essentials and what I brought and what I loved. But anyway, Lake Manier is gorgeous. We uh, felt like the animals there were a lot more comfortable with the vehicle so you could get really up close and personal with them. So. Uh, you'll see just some like, really cool footage from this one. We learned a fun fact that if there are baboons, then it's very unlikely that there are predators in the area. Also, when the baby is underneath the belly, that means that it's a very young baby, but once it's grown up just a little bit more, then it can actually go on the back of a baboon. We were pretty obsessed with babies on this trip. <laughs> And for any Lion King fans, this is Pumbaa. He's a warthog, and when he runs, he has his little tail up in the air like a little antenna. It's so adorable. Then we saw a couple of water buffaloes and a herd of impalas. He wants to get in the car with me. <laughs> It was such a great way to start because every park we went to, it felt like it was just getting better and better. And it was just such an amazing, it was so amazing. I keep saying it because it truly and genuinely was. And the thrill and excitement of each type of animal we saw, even if we've seen it before in the zoo, it's just so different when you get to experience them in the wild. And just, they just seem to be so happy and like carefree wow. and just like, yeah, it, it's just, it's the coolest thing ever. Then we head over to Ngorongoro Crater where we have our campsite and we are just in awe of the landscape on our drive up over. But once we get to the campsite, oh my goodness, I've done glamping before, but this is glamping to a whole other level. 
it's absolutely stunning like this is absolute luxury in my opinion we are greeted with amazing ginger drinks there's a fire pit going that everyone kind of calls a bush tv which is super fun and we are just honestly treated so well at this campsite we have hors d'oeuvres while we're you know just or snacks while we're waiting around and just have a quick um drink and we just take a look around and everything is superb the living area space the common area if you will has a bar in the back where you can get drinks a whole slew of drinks like mojitos and uh, gin and tonics there's a great local gin that we were having as well as south african wines and of course we had to go back to our tent to check it out and at the tent wow this is stunning like a amazing amazing bed that has a heated blanket like they will actually heat up the blanket for you while you're having dinner so by the time you go back to your tent it's already hot and ready for you to go sleep and it's it's so amazing not only that but inside there's a hot shower it literally turns hot quite quickly so you don't really even have to wait and i know this like sounds silly to say but there's a toilet in the tent and that is again super luxurious the fact that you don't have to go to the main lodge to go to the bathroom is super nice especially when there's so many wild animals uh nearby but the nice thing is there are maasai warriors on site so these are people that are there to protect us if needed so uh, we just shine the flashlight if we do need to go anywhere at night and they'll guide us around the lodge or the campsite. I just call it a lodge because like I'm just like this does not look like a campsite to me. Also the cool thing is they'll actually ask you after dinner and we're about to get to dinner. One of my favorite parts but they'll ask you after dinner about your wake up call and what drink you like for the morning and you'll see what I ended up getting. So now we're at the dinner portion and wow, wow, wow. We were not expecting this. Like we knew it would be really nice, but I thought I was gonna lose weight on this trip. But let me tell you, I did not because the food was so amazing. I definitely overate every single meal. And I was on this trip also with my brother and his fiance and they are absolute foodies from New York and they love the food too. So that's when I know it's really great food. It was really cool also to see that there was an Indian influence too because there was a lot of curry dishes and it was just so superb. So we started our morning with our morning drinks that were provided during our wake up call. And I re had requested an Irish coffee the night before, which I found super delicious. Then we went on to do some yoga because they had some yoga mats. It was more like stretches, but it was super fun and got us ready for the day. We had amazing breakfast. They asked us what type of eggs we want every morning. Five out of five star type of service that we were getting. So finally we go on our game drive and wow. To start off our trip, we spot a hyena and the hyenas, honestly, they don't look as frightening as you'd expect them to look. They got super close to the car, which was crazy. Like the fact that I could probably stick my arm out and really like touch it if I wanted to was insane. So that was, you know, a huge shock to the system. And I was kind of grateful that the first car we were in for these game drives had a sliding window and a uh, roof that pops open at the top. So if we felt uncomfortable, we could close up if needed. Uh, whereas the Serengeti Jeep that we use is actually fully open air. So <laughs> just to point that out, the fact that we saw like a hippo, like we were all like going crazy over it. And it's just so fascinating that they're one of the most dangerous animals in the world. So that was really cool to see them, thankfully from a good safe distance, <laughs> but it was really cool. And I definitely used my binoculars a ton that came in handy. And it was super cool. We actually got to see lions who had a kill from the prior night. They were eating it and I can explain to you, this is a part where I truly felt like I was living out like National Geographic and why it, it, it paid to have like such an experience tour guide he actually stopped the car and told us like you see those lines in the distance there are water buffalo all the way beyond 
um, them and they're coming towards the lions but the water buffalo are coming towards the lions because they don't smell them because of the way the wind was blowing and they and the tour guide said when when they actually come they're gonna push the lines away and we might have a greater chance of seeing the lines actually right next to our our jeep and we were like no way because at this point we're using our binoculars to really see them and we're like no way are they get like obviously like we 100 percent believe him but we're like in shock like wow like we might be able to see these lines super close and yeah that was the coolest thing so at this point the water buffalo right realized these lines are there the lines you know have eight the as much of the wildebeest they can the the jackals are like that were chilling on the side they just go in for some scraps if they can now that they have the opportunity and then the lines get pushed out and then the water buffalo kind of like check out the check out the kill but they don't you know they don't eat that they just like kind of chill there and wow the lions the lions are so close to us. I'm not gonna call it who, but someone closed their window because they were too afraid, which was so fair because this was our first lion spotting and imagine it being this close. It, it, was, it was crazy. And the cool thing too about seeing these lions in the wild is that you can see like marks on their body from having fights either with other lions or during um, like hunting from like a, a prey animal and the fact that they have blood on them like it actually like it's just it's it's insane it's just insane to see animals in the wild like this and it's it's scary it's exhilarating it's beautiful it's everything that you could imagine it to be and nothing in that moment like nothing else mattered than these like these animals and you just appreciate even the smallest of details and yeah it was the coolest thing like the whole action that we saw was it felt like it felt like i was i was in national geographic i, I know i keep saying that but it truly felt that way and it's funny my brother was taking photos a lot during the safari and then he noticed the tour guide was taking photos when the lines got right next to our jeep and my brother was like wow you know it's good when the when the tour guide takes photos <laughs> which was like so funny yet so true because uh our tour guide kept saying you guys are so lucky uh and we we definitely felt lucky and it, it was just such a we just felt so blessed to see these animals in such a unique way And just like you'd expect, a hyena moves in on the wildebeest kill to get some scraps for its own. And the jackal also takes an opportunity to also feed off of the wildebeest. We were actually kind of surprised at how the hyena didn't really care that the jackal was also stealing food from the wildebeest as well. Uh, but I think the hyena was more concerned about not pissing off the water buffaloes. <laughs> And then our safari guide let us know that we were about to have an African massage because of the bumpy roads. Also, if you think that, you know, the lodge we were at was luxurious, like, oh my goodness, the lunch that they prepared every single time um, by Sanctuary Retreat, I don't think I mentioned that yet, but yeah, it was Sanctuary Retreat that we went with. Oh my goodness it was like we had a three course meal for every lunch what they packed us and the food was delicious we also love these like ginger um style drinks i think that were like produced by coca-cola it was so delicious so yes i i i'm honestly salivating now just watching this that's how good it was <laughs> okay moving on this is the probably the craziest thing that happened on the trip not the most amazing thing because there's other amazing things to still to come but the most crazy so we i already told this to my family because i had been reading about safaris and one of the like more rare animals to experience on a safari is a black rhino so i told my family up front like don't even think we're gonna see this just so you know and let me tell you 
what was going down was there was a black rhino being chased by a helicopter because they were actually tranquilizing the uh, rhino. I th- it was either to tag the rhino or for something for like research studies. But anyway, uh, there was like a chase between the rhino and the helicopter and a bunch of other jeeps. And we were on this race to watching this black rhino. Like it was insane. And at one point, and you're going to see it, this black rhino, well, first of all, this helicopter lands because it thinks like, okay, like the rhino is going to start getting tired. We tranquilize it just waiting for this guy to like slow down and, you know, take a little nappy so we can do what we got to do. But no. So this helicopter goes down and like waits, but then this rhino comes charging at it and the helicopter has to quickly jump up and you see the rhino kind of like throw its horn at it in the air and like, wow, that was so epic. Like, I, I was so stunned by this that I didn't even know I had it on footage because I was just so in the moment watching all this. So when everyone kind of looked around after this was all done, my family, like my brother, couldn't even get a photo because it was just like too fast paced. And we're like, oh, darn it. Like that was such a cool thing. And then I, I looked back to my footage. I was like, wait, I have it. Wow, wait, it's charging the helicopter. We're charging it. It's charging the it jumped at it. Actually, jumped. That was cool. It jumped at the helicopter just as it took off. Yeah. That was insane. Oh. At some point, this rhino gets really, really tired, and then you see everyone come out. And the nice thing is that when the rhino actually goes down, they wait with the rhino um, until it wakes up, of course. Our safari guide told us, you know, you guys are so lucky. Like, he kept saying that after we saw the lines up close. And then, like, ten more times after we saw this black rhino sighting, he said, happy people always see amazing things on safaris and i'm not surprised that we got to spot this because you guys are a very happy bunch if anything i think our entire group was just super grateful by the smallest of animals like we would get excited if we saw a leopard turtle which yes that is such a thing So then we got back to camp. I filmed a couple of Instagram photos for you guys and got a GNT before I hung out with my family in the living area to chat about all the animals we saw that day and to check out my brother's pretty awesome photography. Also, random note that I forgot to mention was that there was free complimentary laundry service every day. That was a real treat given we were only allowed to bring one duffel bag each on the bush planes. So at this camp, we were only here for two days. So the first day that we arrived, we went to Lake Minera and then we only had one full game drive in the Gorongoro Crater. But to be honest, I think that was very sufficient. We saw so many animals there. We probably could have done a second day, but honestly, we were really content and we're just having the best night ever. We're just sitting by the fireplace, chatting, having some hors d'oeuvres before dinner. And they at this point know that we love our wine. And so they bring some wine out. And it's funny, on the dessert menu, there's blah, blah. And we're like, what is blah, blah? But nobody asks because we're like, let's keep it a surprise what it is. And we were just expecting it to kind of be some type of, you know, ordinary dessert, right? Bye. 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 Bye.
I mean, come on, you guys. Aren't they the freaking best? Like, the nicest people. Like, not even, like, I'm not even talking about, like, the, the customer service of everyone at this camp was amazing and the other camp I went to as well. But just in general, the people in Tanzania are just so nice and so sweet. We didn't have one bad interaction with any person. Everyone was just so, so nice. So, I mean, for us, like, it was just so amazing. I, I'm in awe of how kind the people are from this beautiful country. That's it for part one of the safari. Next up, we head to the Serengeti to see some pretty cute animal babies. I really hope you felt a part of this experience. If you have hopes of going in real life one day, believe it because anything is possible. See you next time. Mm -hmm.